town nurse needs a nurse. That's right. Town nurse needs nursing. Um, so we can do a road report if you want. We can open the meeting and do a road report if you want. Yeah, what? let's do it. Um, okay, we'll call a meeting to order at 6, 11 p.m. Um, Rodney fell down and he didn't break his arm, but um, he banged it up enough so it's in a sling. Did he trip uh, over the town nurse? Yes, I think so. And uh, so anyways, he's not, he was going down to physical therapy today and start on that. Um, Can he drive a truck or is he out? He, he said he could drive truck all right. The problem was climbing out of the truck and climbing into the loader. Um, yeah. he, had, he did that sad day, I guess, but he had an awful time with it. And, uh, but he can hang around the shop and stuff. Yeah. Um, he said that we had no big damage during the rain or the snow. Um, it, you know, there was some trees fell up, fell down and stuff like that. He said they got a, they're going to have a lot of cleanup to do of branches and, you know, stuff they just pushed off to the side of the road, um, but no major damage. Um, Chris Bump called him um, because he's collecting data on how much damage there was, you know, to see if there's any federal money or anything, but- There um, is here. Oh, good. Well, he can take over then. <laughs> Fred's happy. Fred got his head on straight. I know. <laughs> Waiting for the green, it looks like. Where's your conductor uniform, Fred? I don't think the train runs there anymore. He's going to wait a long time. <laughs> What's <laughs> it, um, Doing a road report. You heard just, Rodney? Just started on the, the road before. No, nurse hurt her shoulder? Yeah, she broke her arm or something. Really? Yeah. Huh. You going to pay her to work on herself? I don't know. So we we may, have, may have to. A potential broken arm. She was in the ER last time I talked to her. Huh. That's too bad. Not good. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, no big damage during the flood. Um, the Chevy truck, they're having problems with. It has... Um, two fuel tanks and apparently there's a pump in each tank and the second tank the pump's gone so it's not pumping from the second tank to the first tank so when the first tank's empty then the truck runs out of fuel wow. even, though, even though it says they have almost half a tank um, they don't have. So he was fighting with um, the crew down in Lebanon where they bought it. They have no record that we ever bought it. So uh, <laughs> they don't. They don't want to uh, fix it. So, uh, anyways, he's fighting with them. Um, a new fuel fuel pump lasted what a year? Yeah. Yeah, um, or something. I mean, maybe it's a broken line, a pinch line or something, but it's not getting fuel from, from the second tank to the first tank. So as long as Jim stays aware and, and fuels it up, you know, when he gets down to half a tank, he's all right. But um, Thomas's truck, went down to Lebanon 
week or so ago because the lights were flashing and the death said the death weren't working and they found a bad wire going to the death tank and it wasn't telling it to do its job so they fixed that um the loader was making a noise um they checked it out the water pump was loose and uh um the belt tightener was the bearing was going in it so they were changing both of those items today when i talked to rodney so they should be all set with that and that's about it for the road report All right, sounds like things are under control. Is the Belknap Bridge open? I have no idea. It I didn't. Could be, but I don't know. Yeah, I haven't heard. I and didn't. Why? I didn't ask, and I can't answer that question. I guess. I guess we we'll all find out. Got to drive over it someday. Okay. What else? Did we have questions for Rodney about the budget that he had to get back to us on? The I told him to think about things that he needed extra or right. whatever. I guess the, about the only thing he told me, I talked to him right after the meeting, I think. And the only thing he said, um, you know, was I don't think he had anything special in mind, but he wanted to bump up the maintenance on the trucks because the one of the other ones down in Lebanon every week. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to jack that up quite a bit, I think. That is going to find out what's... Order, order a new truck number. Yep, whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh and he was... Um, Brookfield got a new four-wheel drive Mm -hmm. um yeah you told and, us okay and he looked at that so he's supposed to be getting a price on one of them but i don't know that he has i he didn't say anything today yeah he's also going to find out like about what sand's going to cost next year and yeah stuff um like i didn't quiz him <clears throat> on that today and he guess he wasn't he probably didn't think of it either. Right. That's okay. <clears throat> um, yeah. I will. Uh, I'll get back to him tomorrow. And uh, and quiz him about that. You know, trucking's going to be up. So. Right. Uh, right. So Sam's going to be up. And I don't know if anybody can predict how much. I can't. Um, <laughs> we shouldn't be doing too bad on sand this year anyways. I mean. So far, yeah. Yeah, so far. That could all change. Yeah, yeah. now that you mentioned it. All you drinks does. It's supposed to rain again on the weekend, so. Yeah. Walk yeah. Along. Yeah. All right. That's enough of road report, I guess. Okay. There's no health order, right? So Jody isn't going to show up, obviously. Or, or, or is there anything no. to talk about other than what Jody was going to talk about in person? No, I just know that she wanted to talk about putting a health order on the a property up in North Tunbridge, but I don't have any information beyond that. It was kind of what she had briefed us on in yep. an email a little bit ago so she just is gonna wants to put a health order on it but we'll be in touch and probably it'll be for next meeting yep can you go to other business in case people are sure is, is becky going to come to our budget meeting do you know mariah i think so i think she was planning on it what time do i have it slated for Six forty-five. oh Okay, um, I might be there at 6.45. Did you 
talk to the lawyer or hear anything official from the lawyer besides what we talked about, Gary? Um, no, I didn't talk to the lawyer again. I talked okay. to him last week after the after the uh, hearing, and he basically said that we won, um, but stay tuned because John Echeverria could appeal. could appeal or and or could Reduce it, right? start a new suit of some sort. Um, um, Mariah, can you can you get in touch with the lawyers and see if you can get like a copy of the transcript of her decision, the judge's decision or something? Yep, yep, on the I website. can. Yep, I will email them. Because right that now. might be a, for everyone's information. Yep, I finally read the article in the paper today because I bought the paper today. <laughs> it's old news, but it's better than nothing. Right, I haven't read it yet. Uh, but it mentioned in there that the, the trails were heavily used. And yeah. I thought it was kind of a misquote, yeah. a misnomer yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> and also, can you, you just elaborate on what dismissing it means? It didn't really shed any light. It just said what the, the suit really had nowhere to go, right? The I can't think of what, exactly right. how it was numbered, but it right. wasn't right. Because right. the, the argument was about who has the jurisdiction over maintenance. And since they, the Asheveria, Karen, or what, what Pratt, right. suit was against the town, then the, and the town hadn't done any maintenance, <laughs> then that made it not ripe because there was no issue. Right. And it, had we done maintenance, then it would be an issue. So if we do any maintenance in the future or anything, that would like increase the traffic flow or anything, potentially we could get another suit. Huh. That's what I understood from the, from the article in the paper and from talking with the, her lawyer. But there's, there was no verification on who, who will say that the town has authority well, to maintain that, or approve. That's what I thought was funny because I thought the judge would say either, you know, he had a suit or he didn't. Yeah, you know, by by reviewing the laws, it so. said it, what it said in the paper was that, that the judge doesn't do that kind of thing. They don't just clarify for the sake of clarifying. Right, there has to be some reason. But Fred's gone. Yeah, he jumped on a train. <laughs> right back. Suddenly reappeared. Um, very. But, but was it this uh, right? Uh, uh, wasn't the suit a right of discovery or or something? Can you I answer mean, that, Fred? You're pretty knowledgeable. You got the paper, so, right? So I got the paper right here. I just got it today. You know, we you get things late here and there. <laughs> I've got the article right here. What you want me to say? Well, it sounds like a pretty narrow. You know, when you hear about the Supreme Court, you know, sometimes they make sort of broad ranging decisions. This sounds very narrow, essentially like, you know, if I I sued you, Mike, for driving a blue tractor and you don't have a blue tractor, then the judge right. can just say there's nothing to this. Move right. on. But, but I, I kind of thought the suit was to have a judge say whether we were right or or john was right right you know, that's what i thought but that's why i'm not a lawyer <laughs> i'm sure if if john echeverria had gained any ground we would have heard about it so <laughs> it must be back to the drawing board i guess i i guess <laughs> Yeah, and I guess he could appeal this to the state Supreme Court, I believe, right? Yeah, I think you have to keep stepping up as you go. Is there a court of appeals? I think and so. And it's the Supreme Court, maybe? I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know Yeah, how many 
unlike the federal circuit, I don't know how many levels well, of appeals you get in Vermont, whether you go I, directly to the Supreme Court or if there's sort of a court oh. of appeals. And it's different for these sort of suits as opposed to criminal anyway. Right, right. right. But you could ask the lawyers about that, Mariah, just to sort of get out ahead of it if there's an appeal. Just that if there is a chance that John could take it further, you mean? Well, if if he appeals, is it is the next level at the Vermont Supreme Court or is there a in between? Okay. And also maybe ask the lawyer if at any point a judge would actually clarify or you know write about this already exists in statute, so we don't need to go any further or it exists in precedent, so we don't need to go any further. Well, according, or, to, or, according to our lawyer, it does, and there's, there's no question. Right. That didn't come up in this hearing. Well, apparently not. No. Hmm. Well, I thought also that in that article in the paper, it said, that our lawyer was saying that it wasn't ripe. Um, but I thought that he was pushing, saying that it just wasn't, there was nothing to go on because the state said that we had the right to maintain it. Yeah. And it didn't, in the article in the paper, it didn't even mention that. I mean, it just said that um nothing had happened what which i thought somebody was going to say it says you know in statute blah 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 that right we, we can deal with it um there's somebody who was probably there were you at the hearing talk yes and he can enlighten us maybe <laughs> You could have put me on already. I thought I was going to wait till other business. But... We are out of the business. <laughs> we are out of business. <laughs> Budget stuff not happening? No, we, we skipped over the for now. Okay. We're going to go back. And the uh, health officer. Right? He's on... She has broken her arm, we think, so she's not going to attend. Oh, uh, on ice. Probably. Road <laughs> four person also. Yep. <laughs> Dinged up his arm. <laughs> I had a question. Do you guys know? You know, in Tumbridge, we used to, the road crew used to plow a lot of the driveways. And then, what, were they thrown up or were they turned to class fours? No, they're still class three. But we just don't plow them. Well, I think we still plow more than we should. We do, but there were a whole mess that were dropped at some point. Uh, there were a few that were dropped. A like few. Like Chester's. We used to plow that, yep. or at least up to the farm. Yeah, and uh, Mrs. Darrow. Uh, no, the arrows we still do. Um, yes. Well, maybe Kermit's Drive or. Kermit's, we used to, unless the, Jim is. The dam first across from Steele's. We never, we never have maintained that. We never did. No. No, I was just wondering. Okay, so they didn't change status. No, you know? not, not that I know of. Yeah. Because. Um, down Orchard Road, who are the people on the down at the bottom of the first hill there on the right? Uh, yeah. Sure, it's we, last I knew we plowed pull that one pull in there because my dad used to get annoyed because the artesian well was right there, so you could easily hit it, right? Ooh. Huh. And um, Glen Drive where Ray and Liz are that's yeah, I, I think that's still maintained. Um, Jim Ware's driveway, there's a bunch of them around town, they plow up to the Ware's, yep. Huh. And wolves. And, and those are all class threes, right? Yep. Yep. Interesting. I think we tried when I was on the select board back in the 90s to, to get them thrown up, right. and it was a revolt. And we right. couldn't do it. Reg is here. I think, yeah, Rand Randall is another thing that issue in the last few years. I can imagine. So Todd, you were at the hearing on the 19th. I was there, yeah. I, I had a question about, the, I guess the, the judge didn't clarify who had the 
authority or right or whatever to maintain driveway or, uh, trails. Right. Yeah. And was that your understanding? Right. So there's obviously a difference between you know what you hear at the at the motion to dismiss and what the ruling said. So my question: Have you had a chance to read the ruling? No. Okay. okay. So I, I did send it to him. Recently. I got it today. Okay. It's yeah. only a couple hours. So yeah. I, I didn't expect you to be like, oh, I got to look at my email. <laughs> um, and it, I, it's just to give you a little background, it's a little strange. And this has changed from when I got the summary directly from Chelsea. And that was back uh, you know, in November when I knew that this court date was coming mm -hmm. up, um, where I got right through to Chelsea and they said, oh, what do you need? But now when you call, it's a 685 number, you get put to Montpelier, wow. to the Superior Court Division, and you're talking to somebody, and you, you better be ready with your court docket and everything. And Because um, I asked for, initially, after the hearing, oh, this document's over in the corner taking a transcript. There's a lot of interesting quotes in there, which I might mention a couple of them, but... Um, <laughs> I said, well, I, I bet you I can get the transcript. Then I call the Chelsea number, I'm relayed up there, and then they go, oh, go to the website. You go to the website, and I'm looking at it, and it, it was like $8 a page Yikes. to get the transcript, and it was an hour-long hearing. So I said, well, I'm not doing that. So then today... Can you look at it for free, though? What's that? Can you look at the transcript for free? Yeah. Oh. I, I Okay, so just a little background, sort of legal baseball stuff that I found out is that the person who did sort of say, oh, here's how you get the transcript, said, oh, most times the, the transcript is requested when there's an appeal, and the appealing party will definitely want to have that transcript too, so that whoever their lawyer is can kind of be ready for the next step. Um, so I, I knew calling that number and I got somebody different, and they said, oh, so I've got the docket number and I know there's been a ruling and here's the date, here's the, you know, the docket number. And it took a little while and they fumbled around. No, I got it. And I said, is that something you can email to me? Which he did. Mm -hmm. And I read through it. So, and this kind of circles around to your uh, query about what the judge actually said. Mm -hmm. Now, I could read to you directly from this, if you'd like. Is it like massively long? Or? Uh, it, it's a couple of pages. Um, so it's not that long, but a lot of it is stuff that you already know. Um, so obviously, you know that she ruled in favor of the motion to dismiss. Mm -hmm. But what she is ruling on, I'll just get to um, the last part here, I think is where it's. Um, so this is the really brief version. Having decided to dismiss the complaint for lack of an actual justiciable controversy, the court does not reach the substance of plaintiff's claim that the town lacks the authority to maintain trip. Oh, okay, I think I know so Does that make sense? Well, she's said, dismissing the case, but she's not making a decision on whether we have the authority to do it or he does right yeah that's correct mike right she she definitely during the hearing um asked a bunch of questions which based on kind of where it was leading and, and listening closely um got to the uh discussion of right away um which she does not mention in her ruling mm -hmm. here um but in the discussion of right away with uh, uh john's attorney there um that basically she was saying so um do do you agree that the town does have a right of way uh, yeah so we agreed with that and she said what well, has there um are there any cases precedent cases where uh the town's right of way was well, she quite put it overridden but uh, and the answer was was no. The town the town has a right of way. This isn't trying to take the right of way. Mm -hmm. Then she said, "Well, if you uh, if you're saying that the town does not have any right to maintain and only you know the adjoining the budding landowner does, um, so does that mean that the when there is need for maintenance, does the landowner will they be on you know, basically on the hook to pay for it? no." So in other words, the town 
and this is the, the plaintiff's lawyer, Jeffrey Bitt, who I could comment about his um, appearance rather than performance, uh, is that uh, they definitely want to maintain you know, that he's, they've got the maintenance thing. There's no precedent for anyone else in the state of Vermont having succeeded at this effort to mm -hmm. say that the adjoining landowner only has the right to maintenance, but that they're not going to pay for it. Um, and there were some comments made by him um, earlier that were, that let, let's just say they were incorrect. One of them was about, well, uh, heavy usage of the legal term, right. documented heavy usage. So that, who said heavy usage? Jeffrey Vitt mm -hmm. said of, of that specific trail, heavy usage of the trail. Um, so it's kind of, I don't know if it, you'd say this is a Solomonic decision there as far as kind of splitting the baby, but I would say that yes, uh, to go back to your point, Mike, that no, she did not rule on the maintenance, that the whole thing is about whether the controversy had ripened. In other words, was there really a controversy? And she writes earlier in the opinion, um, which you have in your email, that um, she agreed with Tarrant and actually, um, just so you know, Tarrant was more of a mentor during that. Um, Alexandra made all the comments, the open comments, and, and the position about this controversy has not ripened yet. No action has been taken by the town um, to maintain trails. And Vitt's response was, well, the was it an ordinance that you passed in August saying, um, or well, it was to, you had to have a permit to do any work on uh, class four or legal trails. He really harped on that quite a bit mm -hmm. and that that was the, the precipitating thing. That counted to him as an action that created a controversy and she obviously did not agree. So it's kind of left my reading of it. It's kind of left that, uh, and to review, um, do you have the participants on the screen there? Can you, do you, have you ever gone to look at who else is zooming in? Oh yeah, we we have several here. Oh okay. Well, do you notice uh, the opposing party on there? No. Yeah. Unless it's Fred. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. It is not me. Yeah. I'm making a salad. Hi, Todd. Please proceed. <laughs> <laughs> um, that you know, we go back to you know. Two and a half years, is it two? Yeah, two and a half yeah. years to when we all started in this room. Um, that from that point on, we heard about a possible lawsuit. We got a letter from a different lawyer, as you recall. Mm -hmm. That original letter was not from Jeffrey, but mentioning a lawsuit. Then the lawsuit did come through. And my take, based on the past history of our opponent, is that. Um, the fact that she did not rule, and I don't know about strategy wise or whether you were consulted by the attorney or anything as far as what's the best way to proceed or anything, but the fact that the door is still open on the maintenance, it seems likely that if he is going to bring further action, it would not be an appeal. It would be um, a case, once again, probably in front of the same judge, superior court, mm -hmm. um, just to go to the issue of maintenance. Yeah. Um, and that probably would come if, if, if he's following along and not necessarily agreeing with her because, okay, well, we'll, if there was maintenance being done, um, our hands have been tied quite a bit lately uh, as far as what we're gonna do with our legal trails, et cetera. Um, I, we have insurance, right? That's paying for our attorney. Is that correct? We have insurance for that. Well, well, I mean, whatever, I don't even know what the legal fees are, but we have to pay Tarrant, Tarrant Company. I thought the, the town had insurance that covered a lawsuit. Does that ring a bell from the... Yeah. Not that kind of a lawsuit. If, it, if the ruling's against you, there might be. But oh, okay. It may oh, not, it may okay. not cover... It's tax dollars that are paying for this. Ah, okay. I we were wondering, there was an, uh, some provision where the plaintiff has to pay the legal costs. If, I don't know if, that. If it's reduced, it's so close. interesting you brought that up, John, because before the hearing started, when Betsy and I arrived, um, and the, the uh, planning commission, very well represented, four members of the commission, um, that we were, oh, we're, they're like these little holding rooms, and one said plaintiff, and one said defendant. And, oh, it's, so we went into 
I guess when I went into the defendant's room and then the sergeant at arms came and said, oh, are you, are you here? Oh yeah, you're in the right room. And we we'll hang out and then, uh, even though I'd never met our lawyers, they came in and said, oh, hey, we're in your space. Oh no, you can work. I said, well, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? <laughs> and I mean, you're, you know, you've got to do your case and everything. And one of the questions I asked him was, um, what, depending on the outcome, if there was an appeal or if this were to carry on beyond today or after the ruling that now has been, which was a pretty quick turnaround. I thought it would be, but in the same week, hearing was on Monday. I think it was released on Thursday or Friday. Um, oh, well, if, if this were to go to the Supreme Court, it would be, oh, who knows, nine, 10 months out before if they decided to, to look at it. Um, hopefully it's not going to go to that. But certainly the door is open for him to bring another case. I think a good question that we need to ask our attorney is um, to go back to the maintenance issue. I know what my view is, and this goes back before even now, is, you know, Paul Gillies gave us some pretty solid footing as far as what his opinion was on what the town's rights are in the right of way and maintenance. That if the select board decided, you know what, we're, we're tired of this. We're moving ahead. The public really wants to resolve this. Spring is coming. We need, you know, whatever it is, we need to protect the wetland. We need to look at the, the culvert. We need to get the trees out of the way, whatever it is. And whether it's the town crew or whether it's um, a group of volunteers, Jeffrey Bitt really hammered on that too, that, well, that, you know, this, uh, and I think he was referring to the permit uh, that you passed in, in August. Um, this would permit third parties, you know, not the select board, not the road crew, to to go in and do maintenance, and that that was really you know, beyond the pale as far as he was concerned. Now that would be authorized by, as we've talked here right. before, a, a group of people that were volunteering so they could save the town money to go take care of uh, a minor issue or do research, as we did with um, with George and Rudy and Jonathan and some others that went out and we took notes and right. they, that report went to you as far as trying to stay without going into a permit part. And that was mostly about the wetlands on the yeah. Orchard Road. Um, that I would advocate for um, the select board to seriously consider, not right now, but when the time came to get the trails up and running, I mean, right now, I'm not sure that all that many people, some skiers, and we were up on the, uh, Falls Hill, just walking up and down um, in the winter time. But when it comes around to spring, let's let's get around to maintenance. And if that is the trigger event for mm -hmm. our opponent to bring a separate lawsuit, then so be it. But it could be that uh, the view from the other side is, hey, do they want to risk that? You know, hands are tied, money's being spent. Maybe this will just be in limbo for a while. I don't, I don't think the town, that's a really good position for the town to be in, to, to just sort of, well, what's he going to do next? Or what would any party do next? Uh, well, something I thought about as far as legal trails and maintenance goes is <clears throat> I'd like to investigate whether we could actually use the legal trails without maintenance. I mean, can, can we zig and zag within our right of way and stay out of mud holes and creating bad spots where we need to do any maintenance, then then the maintenance issue would never come up. Yeah, well, other than uh, maybe cutting a tree. Yeah, cutting a tree. So yeah, I mean, in, in a sense, that's kind of how it is now, other than the limitation on types of usage, which of course is still- Right, right. Well, that's a, that's a little bit different. That, that's kind of a related issue. To yeah. Everything. Um, my, you know, and this is very subjective, my sense and having um, listened to him originally back more than two and a half years ago and having listened to him only a couple months ago at the law school, uh, that's a whole different story is that, and as you have seen from his letter, you know, he wants to possibly litigate this all the way to the Supreme Court. Um, he, he, I, I don't think, and the whole thing of the alternative trail, which you did get reports on from various parties, mm -hmm. um, including a member of the planning commission, myself, Michael George White, um, that 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 was the non-starter from the very beginning, mm -hmm. both um, environmentally, to go back to the, the wetlands, 
more more wetlands and stream crossings involved there than in the existing legal trail. Uh, and two, expense wise, and I think he is on record as saying that, you know, well, I don't know if he quite said I won't pay for it, but he, I mean, that that was a anyway, that was kind of a uh, an alternative to nowhere. Um, I I think that by to to your hypothetical, what if you were just really careful? So does that mean that he wins? It's like saying, well, we're not really going to do maintenance. We're going to be really careful. We won't do any maintenance because is is the reason why? Because it might trigger another lawsuit, or because you don't think the town has the right to maintain its own legal trails. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean that's up to you all to decide. Um, Paul Gillies weighed in pretty strongly about that. Um, he is, you know, pretty, pretty notable in his expertise there. But what I meant was just plain, if, if you know there's a wet spot, don't walk in it. It, it. Just stay away from it. I mean, put some ribbons up and some stakes or something and just, just avoid it. Avoid the wet spot, which would in, in, in turn avoid the controversy. And then you could just... He wants a controversy. Well, I know. Controversy will happen. Yeah. No matter what. Well, I suspect you're right. Yeah. And so it's a question of who who is going to either participate, you know, continue the controversy. When will we get to the end of this controversy? Will the trails be sort of held <clears throat> in advance for a while? I, I don't know. Yep. Um, it, it's a little bit unfortunate that the second point, actually, I'll, I'll read you, which was a little um, not confusing, but I thought earlier in the judge's opinion here. Uh, she describes, let's see. Uh, I think I can find it. Really is a good bicycle advocates. So just so you know, in the you'll see this later. Um, I would say this a little bit of a, or a current term fake news. Um, in, in, but the background, this is what she got in front of her from the two parties, and, and this would be from the opposing party, um, giving a background. The town currently permits walking on the trail. Several years ago, bicycle advocates allegedly, quote, launched a campaign to encourage the town to allow bicycling on at least one of the trails. Well, um, history doesn't really bear that out. Uh, but <laughs> Do you, do you remember that, Mike? No. Uh, launch launching campaign. Um, she goes and makes another comment, which uh, means disagreement. No, 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 this, uh, no, 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 they do. this is more about whether there's a controversy or not. Uh, well, I will read you this. Um, the desires of bicycle advocates and even the recommendation of the Planning Commission focus on explaining the permitted uses of the trails in question, but do not, according to the complaint, focus on maintenance of the trail. Even if they did, there is no allegation that anything more than discussion about the trails has occurred. The select board has reached no decision to perform maintenance on the trails, nor has the town delegated the authority to maintain the trails to a third party. Plaintiffs admit that the select board has not taken any further steps to implement the planning commission's recommendations. Even if the court were to consider the recently approved application form for quote, miscellaneous improvements, which uh, appears to relate to town approval for improvements to town trails, such as might be pursued by trail users or owners of the property on which the trail rights of way lie, there is no allegation that anyone has brought, sought such approval let alone that the town has granted such approval. Um, and then the last thing about she's not ruling on whether the town lacks or has the authority to name tra trails. I, I so think she said no light on that at all. What's that? She said no light on that at all. In, in her comments, or at least her 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 perspective from the bench when she was pushing Jeffrey Vitt about right of way and doesn't the town have any rights here and um he you know kind of hesitantly agreed he stuck by the maintenance thing and it, it seemed like a, a catch-22 so if the town has it's a public right of way 
and the, the town, you know, it is still listed in the, you know, the state transportation code, et cetera. I mean, it is obviously at the very bottom from class one through four and then legal trails. He really went on, if you look at um, the, well, you, you could ask for a transcript, although I don't want to burden the town with, you know, more expenses, but um, he, he cited uh, the legislature in 73. In fact, was your dad part of the legislature in 73? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, and then in 86, that they changed, uh, legislature changed the statute. And his argument was that it effectively took away the town's right regarding legal trails, the maintenance, that because it wasn't affirmatively mentioned, he didn't say this, but he was implying that the town um, by implication still has the right to maintain, basically he's saying that this just reverted to the adjacent landowners, the 86 changing of the law. She, he mentioned that at least three times. And at one point she definitely indicated a little bit of impatience with his just kind of sticking with the same story. And then um, it did get to a point where they were citing section 310, uh, it sticks in my mind, a subsection of the code for 310 and he didn't have it in front of him and she was querying him and our counsel, Alexandra, handed him 310 over to him in front of the judge with all of us watching. And I think he said, thank you, but it was kind of a poignant moment there. Um, so no, as far as, no, it's, it's unfortunate that it, whether it was presented in a way or whether she was dodging the bullet or whatever, but her main point is this, this hasn't gotten to the point of being a, a controversy and she can't make an advisory opinion. That is not in her purview to make an advisory opinion. She can make, if there is what she judges to be a real controversy, then she can make the ruling. If she was sitting on the bench and it came to her as, hey, can the town maintain legal trails or not? I feel pretty good about the decision there, but it has delayed it that much more. And my concern is about this delay. Um, and what the, what the town is, what the town might do going forward. Yeah. And wasn't Tomasi supposed to be the judge? He has moved on to another district. Uh, I think she's been in place, must have been right around the time, because when that yeah. um, notice came out in late October, he was listed as the right. judge. So yeah. that's within two months. So he's still a judge. I forget where. Yeah, um, they, I mean, they rotate, but it's interesting they didn't. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that part of the regular schedule that they rotate? I think so. Oh, okay. So there must have been a rotation. Yeah. That, that happened. Or somebody got sick and maybe there's a substitute. Yeah. Sort of she maybe. she definitely, you know, she's got all the briefs ahead of time. It, it, it's right. more like a pro forma. Okay. Now the, I've got all the writings in front of me. Now make your oral argument to me. Right. And I would say if you had to judge the amount of time between our attorney and attorney, it was probably 70, 30 with uh, Vit taking up 70% of the time and our attorney being pretty direct, here's our case. And, um, but it was heavily on whether um, this controversy has reached and whether it was ripe or not, which I was a little surprised that that was the lead argument. Yeah. And that's what she ruled on. Right, very narrow. It, very narrow, yeah. exactly, John. Um, narrow. But we were wondering, did anything come up, you know, if, if there's a tree across Orchard Trail and, you know, I want to cut it, can the abutting landowners, do they have to re request from the town or vice versa? Does the town, if they want to move, remove that tree, have to request from the abutting landowners? That, that did not come up at the hearing. Um, it, it certainly as kind of a parallel, it comes up all the time around here. We had a lot of trees go down over various roads. Yeah. Like budding landowners, some guy driving by with his chainsaw right. doesn't call Rodney. He just gets the tree out of it. Right. Yeah. Just this tree issue about, because I was like, the dead trees along the road. Is it the town? Does the town have the ability to just go cut a tree? And he said, no. You'd have to talk to a landowner and get their permission. But if the tree falls across the road, he can then take care of it. So it has to wait until it is. I don't know if that answers your question, but a little bit, yeah. So as I, I did ask Thomas just recently, <laughs> all of this tree stuff, I was like, <laughs> we like 
get rid of some of the dead trees that are all falling down. And he's like, no. Because then we have to take the landowners and get permission. And... So. Right. So a tree near where we live, actually just across the line in um, Royalton, but the tree released at its uh, base was on Betsy's property, but it fell across. So the top of it was on the other landowner's property, but it was blocking the road. And actually, it wasn't a tree that we thought was going to go down. And um, when I drove out the other day, it had been very nicely cut, still a little bit hanging out in the road, like the, the plow truck would have a little issue with it. They need mm -hmm. to cut it back a little bit more. And I don't know who cut that. But, you know, if you want to get into technicalities, so a lot of it was right in the road, but then the upper half of it was on that landowner's side and, and the base of it was on this land. And there's two different towns. And yeah, well, no, at that point it was both Royalton. Oh, okay. yeah. So Betsy owns <laughs> property in Royalton. Um, so I guess my earlier point was that we know all the time that private citizens take trees and limbs out of the road yeah. without consulting with the town. Right. And th this is a whole different thing. And I don't think it's a controversy. I think it's just generally accepted. Hey, thanks a lot. Is there, a, and to right. go back to actually Mike mentioned earlier, uh, several months ago, Mike probably remember about liability if something happens in the middle of the legal trail. And I would assume it's maybe the same with the other roads is what if that person trying to do a good Samaritan thing hurts themselves? I don't think the town is liable for that. So. No, so. they're, they're proactively doing something. And if something goes wrong in the town right away, sorry, but. So I, I think that people should just continue to do that. But then if you were to extend that, which I'm not saying I don't have the legal authority or the knowledge, but what about a public citizen going on the legal trail and saying, hey, this tree's in the way of everybody. I got my saw, I'm gonna take it out of here without consulting with you all. Like, well, use an electric chainsaw so no one could hear it, who would kill it? <laughs> Gary, <laughs> that's pretty sneaky. Mike's <laughs> Good at night. Well, I think that uh, the standard is different depending on sort of safety and emergency type situations. Yeah. So mm, that's where okay. like common, Good point. once you're in that, you know, if, if a tree is fallen right on, across the Stratford Road, and right. it's a heavily, heavily used. So it could get worse so. real fast. Yeah. yeah. And especially if you're working within the right of way, if, you, if you're going 50 feet out into someone's lawn or something, that's yeah. a different story. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, a banner on a legal trail that never gets used. Right. It's, I'm not sure how proactive you could be. Right. No, I think, yeah, I think I mean, you're I right. I think budding landowners could be, I think the town could yeah. be, but I don't think third parties probably should be going there. No. Um, but Unless they have a electric chainsaw. <laughs> it's interesting that there's there's certainly a lot of legal precedent on right of way. But this touched on that is interesting. Yeah, and actually, the judge was the first person to use that term right oh. away. No, neither party mentioned right of way. Mm. It was about legal trails and town's authority, private land authority, maintenance. But until she said, well, th this is a public right of way, isn't it? Yeah. Which Betsy and I were like, oh, yeah, of course, of course it is. And then, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so the town has, you know, the right of way as well as the public. The town's part of the public, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hesitant answer to that. Um, it's so, still unclear to me. You know, we've talked about authority versus duty. Like the town has the authority to do certain things in its right of way, where it doesn't necessarily have the duty to maintain. No, but it could no I if think it wanted to. I, I think from Paul Gilley's, um, uh, you know, not testimony, but just kind of advice that he gave us that you have, um, I think the key word is discretion. Yeah. When it comes to legal trails. Total discretion. I got to worry about that person thinking a big complaint. We, you know, and, and they're asking us to go, you know, pay for it or whatever. You know, they're a pain in the ass. We don't need to do that. Um, but you also have the discretion because either on your own or or Rodney or the public says, hey, this is really becoming a problem. And either the town decides on its own budget or in this case, particularly with legal trails, and this goes beyond just the orchard trail, because there's definitely 
worthwhile maintenance possibilities on the crossroad. And um, actually we just went up and down at least the existing part of the legal trail on Falls Hill and there, there's really no big maintenance issues there right now. Um, to, uh, we've, we've got public minded citizens who would like to have access and everything who are willing to help us out and it's actually no cost to the town. And maybe they go through that permit process that you admitted. And that was one of the big things uh, just to reiterate that uh, Jeffrey Vitt brought up was once you um, signed off on that permit, that was a precipitating action. That he thought his position was that joined the controversy. Therefore, judge, you need to accept, you know, the complaint. That made it right. That made it right. And she's saying no, it didn't. No. That you're, was all about Sawyer Hill. That's where that yeah. that's from. I don't remember it being legal trails. I thought it was just class four. Maybe my right. four. Right. We haven't we haven't authorized any or had any permits from anybody to do any work on a legal trail. Not we, yet. <laughs> we just that's right. Um, we just had the one on the class four road, so we haven't you know, we haven't made any deal to let anybody do anything. You know, if you want to look at it that way. Ordinance? I don't remember it being an ordinance. We just said, yeah. let's have a permit. Yeah, just a simple permit. Just to yeah. sort of keep tabs on, just so people aren't free freestyling on class four roads and yeah. that we know about it, or Rodney knows about it. So like an ordinance would have been, we yeah, would have had hearings and actually yeah. passed Right, that. and so I, I'm not, I can't quite remember maybe Jeffrey that didn't use the term ordinance, but yeah. he definitely referenced the permit on several. And of course, the um, lawsuit was filed long before we got it. Interesting right. timing of that. Yeah. A lot of timing things are a little bit. So. He brought the, the lawsuit when it wasn't right, hoping for what <laughs> must have happened. Right, yeah. All, right. All right. Well, more on this, I'm sure. Yeah. We got to get to budgeting. Okay. But as far as the right find in the future, is there a way blanket legal bills? Sorry, say that again. I was, you know, the, it's sort of nuisance lawsuits. Is there a way, you know, that if somebody keeps suing on a municipality, can can we somehow embed in there, or would Vermont statute protect us to have the plaintiff pay the defendant's legal bills, which in this case is a municipality? Yeah, I'll I'll look. I'll reach out and ask them. Yeah, ask our lawyers. So well, I asked him that. Yeah. Oh. Ten. Yeah. In the in the ante room, and he said uh, the answer to that is at least at this level. Now, whether it's because it's superior court or because it's a declaratory judgment and it's not an official lawsuit, he said, uh, no, yeah, that the um, plaintiff does not have to pay. But I wonder if it moves up the food. Right. right. We should find that out. Exactly. At what point does it? Because I think that, um, and I would advocate that the town just gets its, you know, basically claims the rights that it already has and doesn't wait around for the opponent who now has a lot more time on his hands. He is retired um, and he's very stubborn. Um, he'll find a way to bring an action um, and why not exercise your rights? And if that brings his action at that, and particularly if you've got the answer that if he loses, he pays for everything, um, which might be different. Yeah, exactly. But as you remember in his letter from whatever it was early, last spring that willing to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. But he can't take this to the Supreme Court. This is it's, it's the it's the next step. All right, I'll let you get to the budget. But I thought you didn't so, but you, you have the agreement. And then Yeah. I think Maureen has a question. Uh, yeah she does. Yeah I I just it, not a question, just a comment. I was at the hearing also, and um, I, you gave Todd Tyson a lot of time uh, tonight um, discussing everything. And um, I just, from my perspective, yes, it, it, there was no decision made. 
it was because it was not considered to be ripe. Nothing had been done. The select board had not made any, done anything, and so there was nothing to be done, to be decided on. Um, but, you know, this all started with the town plan and um, in the town plan, the class, the uh, legal trails were for hiking only. And um, bicycle use and mountain bikes and bike use was uh, added into the town plan and the, not in the, in my opinion, not in a very transparent way. Um, and just to get back to the hearing, uh, what was brought up was from uh, the Dodge Farm perspective was that the change that the state made from making having towns be obligated to maintain trails was changed to in 1986 to that they no longer were obligated to maintain trails because of the financial um, burden on the towns. And uh, so it, it, you know, to me, it just seems like a small group of people that want to, um, you know, ride their bicycles through a property that someone doesn't care to have bicycles ridden through. It could be easily resolved by the select board who have the authority to say it's for hiking only. I just wanted to say that because you gave somebody a very long time to, um, you know, to speak for a very small amount of people that wanted that have been using the legal trails i have horses if they don't want horses going through there i won't go through there it, it's just a respect for land owners um mike you know i have asked you your father gave us permission to ride in your feet in the fields that I guess now belong to your brother, you know, I won't go until I get permission. And I, I, I just wish that the town, you know, we should be more like that, just respectful. No one is saying that, I mean, the Dodge Farm, they're, they are not saying people can't go through there. It's just the mode. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. I could potentially kickstart a bill at the legislature. We're about to start a new biennium. Mm -hmm. If there's anything, you know, people on the call or Tumbridge people want to do to somehow bring clarity, since it's not coming from a judge oh, right good now. Good idea. Um, and I, the lawyer, I think, it, who's um, really good on all, you know, we dealt with him with, um, he was the, I think he wrote the bill on tree wardens, which had a lot to do with right of ways. Uh, so it'd be interesting if there's a way for us, you know, it's always like courts or you take legislative action. And so well, there's a chance for us as a town mm -hmm. maybe to take legislative action yeah. and bring clarity to this issue, which would be a statewide thing. So, and we only have like 25 days or something like that. Like bills have to be introduced mm -hmm. yeah. um, in January. There's a, a fellow legislator, and I don't know if he ran, he was from the Woodstock district. He was running for Lieutenant Governor, I think. Um, Charlie Campbell. Charlie, yeah. Charlie Kimball. Yeah. Did he run again or is he out now? He's out now. Because he was very interested in, in this general subject about ah, public writing think, yeah. and stuff. But you might want to touch base with him. Yeah. Um, no. yeah oh, uh, I think the wider picture, and I, and I have taken up a lot of time, Maureen, I agree, uh, but is that, um, this ruling, well, not this ruling, but some future ruling that, let's say, agreed with the current plaintiff would be a statewide 
There are lots of towns that have legal chairs. This would be unprecedented. This has not happened before on the maintenance issue. And remember, that is the core of that, that suit. Now, maybe there'll be a different um, core of a potential next suit, but that it was about maintenance. It wasn't about the bicycle advocate. That was thrown in, but it's about maintenance. That that would, that would end up being a pretty major case that would just go, that would go outside of Tunbridge. And, you know, unless the legislature um, were to do something, of course, we know that takes time, but I, I like the, I like the idea. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'll, at the very least, I'll ask the, the legislative counselor, you know, if, mm -hmm. if there's a way to bring clarity to this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good. 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 Well, any other business? Any other other business? Something I'd like to not forget is the noise ordinance that we had started. Because we had, well, I mean, we haven't had any complaints just recently, but at some point we will. Barking dogs or motorcycles or fireworks or something there. Electric yeah. chainsaws. Yeah, well, we probably won't hear that. Um, but anyway, I'd just like to not forget that. Budgeting, maybe. We'll yep. This winter. You better talk to your administrative assistant. She's right all there. over it. I'll do it after budgeting. I'll bring our draft into the office. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're going to budget. Right. Do we have any, any timetable on Mike Hal fixing the dock at the transfer station? Yeah. So he said he went down and that he thinks that there's going to need to be some posts put in and that he can't do that now that the ground's frozen. And then he also said that one of the containers is going to need to be moved and he's going to need help from the road crew to move that but that he has been down and he has looked at it and he's aware of what needs to get done to it. It's just a matter of when it's gonna be able to get done. Okay, but because if it has to wait till spring, then at least maybe he could do some sort of stabilization. Just yeah. this, if it, it's in pretty bad shape, so. If there's okay, I'll give him I'll give him a call back. And I also asked him about the windows to he was going to go through the town hall and the town office and he was going to make sure the storms were shot and look at and make a note if there was ones that were broken and couldn't right. get them shot. Uh, but I'll call him back and say, do put a band aid on the dock, do some sort of something, and then we'll fix it in the spring. Well, don't need anybody getting hurt. Yeah. I'm gonna need another band aid for the <laughs> For the fuses, probably too. That's something that's the yeah. ongoing thing. Mike said he had trouble with that the other day. Okay. Do you want me to send this this file to Mariah so she can screen share it? I mean, I think on a hard part of you would have to scroll through it as we're talking about it. Maybe that hard though. Is so that something Mariah you would be up for? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Mike doesn't have this. Becky, Becky, I'm going to text you my personal email address because I'm on not my work laptop. Okay. Because that's sitting on the phone. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but um, so I went through and put in all the numbers we had talked about in the general fund. Yeah. Um, and then we went through and put them out. Uh, yeah, income, the revenues, time. I wasn't going to read some of the apples. Yes, that. Our revenues. Oh, unless there's some reason to not. <laughs> I mean, unless there's some like state aids going out for some reason or something like that. Um, I did highlight, and even though you don't have a living color, there are two swap ties. That I didn't see any of those. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Grand, oh, okay. Grand, gray. Like mileage. Grants manager. Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, yeah, there is a note there. There's that one, grants manager. How are we yeah. handling that one? Are we going to budget for it or are we going to not budget for it? Harper's going to pay for it, but do we, do, but do we budget it in and then? Um, She's not a town employee, right? She is a town employee. No. Um, but how we pay for her budget, how we pay her her salary is up to us, but. And we just have the our time plays as as far as we don't do help or anything like that. No, no, no. But I mean, she's on the town payroll. We right. pay, you know, the, um, the taxes for. Her. But um, twenty eight thousand just be ARPA income. Well, so I mean, we could, but here's my fear: is that um, so the ARPA money is going to pay for it to begin with? Do we take it? So we want to take it out and just use ARPA for next year. I don't know, I'm just wasn't sure how to do this. <laughs> like do we budget for it as a position? It's a new position. And then you know the ARPA money comes in and covers that, but then that would still create tax well if, if she's a town employee, um are we using this year to are we going to use all ARPA money for all our town employees this year? Is this one of the years we're using? So that, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're using, this is a- um, Fair question. A fair question or a, I'm sure um, our actual grants manager <laughs> knows how we're doing that. Um, so I'm not sure. Well, if we're using this year, we just put her down as an employee and we pay her right um, whatever it is and then then we pull it out of the after money all right but then do we budget for it next year or do we just assume that it's zero although i did put in fica for if her. we run out of if we can't use after money then we would um you got to then we'd no you gotta we'd have to start paying her right that, and that's so I think I think we got to budget it every year. Um, okay. How we pay her could change. Right. Um, that would create a surplus. Right. It potentially could, which could go back to our our ARPA funds. I am not sure how to like. This is where I was like, well, do you put it in the budget or no? And if you don't put it in the budget, and then ARPA money runs out or she doesn't get enough money from grants, then there's nothing there to back it, it up. Right. No, no I think I think we have to budget it. And how how we pay for it, it's another thing. How and this year you didn't obviously budget for ARPA grants manager or a grants manager in general, which right. is a big ticket. I mean that's a lot of money because we don't add employees who make that much usually. Yeah. Um so where do we find the money for that? Um, so if we if we're going to use this year's and ARPA money, we can pull it out of there somehow, right? Even if we didn't budget it. I think we can. The other thing is, is there's a surplus from last year that we can. Yeah. Right. Um. So I'm, I'm not super concerned, but then I was like, as I was going through putting in numbers, I was like, I feel like we need to budget it. But then I was like, do we need to raise it or do we not need to raise it? 
and tax money. That's where I just went. I have, a, I have a suggestion is that you talk to Marianne and Sarah, you guys and so triangulate and see what they recommend. Okay. They have okay. ideas about this community. I will ask Marianne. <laughs> Well, especially Sarah, because she deals with so many different towns. Right. She may have heard this argument before. Yeah. Um, I think it sounds like we have flexibility to do it a number of ways, but. Yeah. I mean, I just. Just be convinced, like Mike said, I think once we go down our budgeting road, it's yep. not really a problem. Coming into a circle. Yes. So, and then um, mileage, we need to increase it for the miles. How much you think? I wrote 200, but then I was like, I saw her first mileage. You sent some mile, 50,000. Yeah, it was like 138 miles. So it, that could add up quickly. Yeah, probably would be 500. So that kind of where I went, yeah. I probably we should increase that 500. And then the last, uh, the last one I had was, so we had talked about level funding Mariah to where she was last year. Mm -hmm. We apply the 10% increase to that or just level fund? Or to Bonnie. Uh -huh. Or to Bonnie. So I, I, I put Bonnie in at 15 hours a week. So that will increase that. And so we can, and I left it what it was last year, but I put what it would be if we gave it the 10% increase. So that's the 16,800? No, the 16,800 is Bonnie's, the 33,500 next to it is the 10% increase. So for Mariah. Yeah. yeah. Whether you guys want to use that number or the 3,500, that's. I wasn't sure which road you wanted to go down. Um, I guess I don't understand. Say it again. Okay, so we had talked about when we were looking at adding funding Mariah at her maternity. Um, <clears throat> Salary, the where she had dropped it down to to take mm -hmm. the time off, and so we were going to keep it there, and then you know up uh, what we were paying Bonnie, so Bonnie could stay at 15 hours a week. And so I put that in, and I was like, but then, then we talked about giving everybody a 10% increase. Are we increasing that lower amount by 10%, or are we leaving it level funded? That was my question. I guess we're increasing it by 10%. Okay. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> For example, Becky, the treasurer has the 10%. Mm -hmm. right. okay. So I put everybody in a, a, at the 10% increase. Um, well, it seems to make sense to do it. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that was your intention. Yep. That's why I, I figured it all out, but I, we had said level fund, so. I want to make sure it's the right thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm still waiting. Uh, one you should be aware, the cemetery fund, uh, they talked to the mowers and they are going up quite a bit. Yeah, a bit. Uh, we're now going to go from asking for 9,000 to 17,000. That's quite a bit. Uh, they're Just not to cover sure. mowing. Yeah, well, and they're not sure because they send it out to bid and they don't know what they're going to do. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to send that out to bid too. I had talked to Baxter, but he couldn't remember all the names of the cemetery. So I was waiting for Dennis to give me the list so then I can put it in the Herald and get it out. I have the list. Okay, perfect. Then I will do that this, then I'll do it this week. Okay, perfect. I just forgot to give it to you. Um, I haven't gotten the library fund budget yet. Yep. And then appropriations. And did we did 
did Simon tell us what the fire department appropriation would be? Not yet. Okay. I couldn't remember. I was like, I know he talked about upping yeah. fire truck amount. Right. Right. And were they upping that? Did you want to up the fire truck amount to 45? Did I get that right? What was it? I think so. It was 30, I think. Was it 30? It was 30. Yeah. And then I could, I don't think I wrote it down and I was like, I will, I will, maybe Mariah can help me look back and we can hear what he said again. Or I could just ask him. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my problem. I was like, I don't think I actually wrote that down. Um, I think because we weren't budgeting at that point, so I didn't write right. it down. Yeah. I was just listening, and I was right, right. my mind. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's that's where I'm at for those expenses. Well, maybe if we call them too, Mariah, if you want to call Simon, and then we can double check on whatever he wanted to increase the equipment fund for. But then he yeah. may by now they may have a solid number for their appropriation. Okay. Um, When's the deadline for appropriations? Request? It's, I think it's already gone past if it's not right now. It's, that's Anissa. So I don't know what the exact date is, but it's, is it, it might have already ended. Is it the first of the year? I don't think so. I think it's before that. Huh. Well, I think it depends on if you're on a calendar year or a, oh, um, fiscal. a fiscal year. I don't know. And I don't know what they fall on. Um, but so those were those were my questions as I was putting numbers in. And then we're just going to keep all of the revenue streams the same. You don't think, I don't think any of the projections or. Yeah, I don't think. I don't anticipate any of them changing drastically. Although I will also tell you guys, I am changing credit card companies. And why? Why? Yeah. I see the current one and they keep charging us fees, even though they told me they absolutely would not. Oh, yeah. Remember when you told us about it? Then that. they were like, now they're charging me an $80 fee every month. Oh. And I was like, done. I'm absolutely done fighting with you guys. So um we're changing credit card but that won't affect uh it should mean that we have no more fees because i'm gonna go with one that only works with governmental oh, good. agencies so i don't have to have this fight with them every month um so yeah unlike the expenses side we're not because of inflation it's not like we're unless you guys want to there's not like a the gold yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't I don't think anything's gonna go up all that much. Yeah. Um yeah. I think it's a better idea to keep everything the same. Yeah. Uh this, this one. Yeah, bank and trust. It's fluctuated so much, I don't even know anymore. Right. <laughs> it's it's not much, no matter what. No, well, it was it was, it was climbing so nicely before yeah. 2020, and then yeah. now it is now it's kind of going back a little bit. Uh, okay, and then highway. Um, I put so Mariah, there's a little tab at the bottom. This is highway. Did you see that? You did, didn't you? She's on it. Look at you. Um, I put in all the wage information. Oh, good. Um, With the increases. Yeah. So these are the COLA plus Mike's proposal? Yes, okay. this was Mike's proposal. Um, so I, I put those in already. In hopes. Well, so you guys can see it and then yeah. don't agree with any of it. 
I, we can change it. I did also up the uniform amount because that is always a steadily climbing. Yep. Say that again. I upped the uniform line because that okay. is increasing. Who do we okay. use? Uh, we use Foley, but I feel like that that is just like it climbs by a few cents all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unifirst has always been the same way. They stretch out and then every month they go up $11 or $8 or something. I was gonna say, I feel like this goes by cents. It's like a dollar fifty more this month. I'm like, oh, when, when did that happen? Um, so yeah, so. I don't know if you guys oh, what do you that. got? What do you got? Uniforms forty five hundred. Yeah, yeah. We don't budget garage cleaning because we pay her. No, we do, but because I changed how we paid her, like she used to be. So we pay. I budgeted. Um, so we'd gone up at one point in our budgeting because she was gonna clean more often, mm -hmm. but she only does two hours a month. So I oh. figured out what that was. I was like, so we don't need to have it so high when right. there's no way we're gonna ever pay her that much. Um, um, what? Get back now, Maria, on the health insurance. So that's what it's going up to. Is yeah. Fifty, one hundred. Yes. Okay. So that's a eight thousand dollar increase. Yeah. yeah. I have to go back and, and recheck the one that I calculated for mine because I think I did mine on the total amount. So mine might be a little bit lower than what I have budgeted. Mm -hmm. Let me circle that. I, in my head, remember mm -hmm. thinking. The last budget and actual, so you couldn't do any better than that. Right on the money. What? Like the 42,000 and 4150. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what we want to see. So you must have a pretty good idea of what like this year will come in at. Well, I hope so. But we'll see. Yeah. Um hopefully it doesn't go up by a lot <laughs> this next time. Cause that was it was a big jump this year. You know. Like big jump. Do they have schedules of when they're going to so yes they do send it out but they don't send it out until December. Right. the last minute yeah yeah so and that's when they open for open enrollment so they send it to me right around then and it's on the calendar year uh well so there's it depends on when you fall like i think there are two open enrollment times and we happen to be the december open enrollment for January 1st start date. Right, remember that. So. Those radios is, what does that mean? Is that maintenance? Is it the serve, you know, the, the you get a signal and you have to pay for that or something? No, so it's just maintenance. Okay. It's just when you have problems. And it, potentially if we, get new high band radios with our for money we should have, have less problems with problems but do you have a second sort of line item there or is it are we taking that into oh, account because sounds sounds like we've been running it high anyways right um yeah i mean we can definitely drop that down i i don't think i think there was it was one year where they were having a lot of problems yeah. with radios, or it might have been when they were changing trucks that it was really high one year. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember why, but yes, it was. And I, I'm not, 
I'm not sure why it was, but we could definitely drop that down, I think, easily. Well, you could put it down to a thousand. Yeah. <clears throat> the guys use their cell phones a lot too, don't they? At, at times. Does Robbie have a cell phone? He well, very long he, he has one, but he claims he doesn't. <laughs> I, was say, I think he has one, but does he know how to use it? Probably not. I'm not sure. I know Larry and Thomas, but the problem is, is that I know Tombridge doesn't have the greatest service as right. you go up in right. mountains and stuff. So they have to have the radios because I know there are times when I'm trying to emergency text, text Thomas and no. he doesn't get it till he walks in the house. So <laughs> I know that. <laughs> You can call Rodney at base and he can get on the radio. Yeah, and if I could get a hold of somebody to get it on the radio, then I know I could have gotten a hold of him. Um, are we planning any maintenance for the garage this year? Nothing special, I don't think. I haven't talked about anything. We could also drop that 5000 down. You know, I think every now and again, the, like, the garage doors need to be serviced or new wheels put on them or, or right. something. And that racks up a thousand dollars right something. and they're supposed to get the furnace cleaned and right um bunch of little stuff so do we want to do like two thousand dollars on that line uh do 2500 yeah we had nobody's driven through that garage door in a while so <laughs> now they will fingers crossed um and then I'm not sure what you guys think each truck. What? What What each truck? Why don't means. you put it in? I don't know. I have tried to do a few things, but I don't know because nobody knows. Um, I was thinking about going up 20% on the truck maintenance. OK. Um, because it seems like every month we do more and more and i don't even know if that is a realistic figure or not but well i think the harder part too is that the trucks are gonna last gonna have to last longer because we're looking at two years potentially to replace each truck yeah we talked about swapping them well we well, should we should be able to still pull it in we just gotta think two years ahead that's all yeah. hopefully i mean once we get and maybe that will end someday i don't know Probably not. that's been an issue so i think the hard thing about tires is i don't always know what truck they go to so i have often put them under uh, just maintenance in general, oh, maintenance supplies, which is why that tends to go so high because I often do right. not have a clue. Where is maintenance supplies? Uh, so you'd have to. Put it down. Yeah, it's on the second page for us. Oh. So, so right now, our current budget is at 15,000. My, my page turner um, took off. She, she ran away. So I can tell you that we had it budgeted at 15,000, but right now, or as of 1130, we're almost there, yeah. it's, it's at 13,000. Yeah, we're, we're getting blown out of the water there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank if, you we're, if you're dumping tires in there, then we almost ought to double that. Yeah. Okay. Because that's basically what tires have done. Yeah. Well, I kind of stick that in anything. I don't know what it is. You get 30? Yeah. Even 30. I, I think so. Um, that seems to make sense. I'd rather be a little too high. And the only other one that I, I wasn't sure about was contracted services. Because we are also um, a lot on that. A lot on that. Oh, I'll say. Um, Man. come on, Mariah, quit flipping around here. <laughs> um, wow. Ooh. 
That's so. <laughs> and I think. Did we not? So I think I some of this is is. Well, is some of that going to be grant money or something? Well, no. I think some of this is. Um. Because that's yeah. in, that's insane. Trucks contracted to haul sand. Um, that doesn't go under the sand budget. But you ought to yank that out of the sand budget. I guess I don't always know what they're contracted to do. So, like, I think there's Shane Blue in there. Um, Last year's like the sand is whatever the sand price is is delivered price whereas in right. last year right. it wasn't delivered price well so last year there was only one for, like jl smith mm -hmm. he gave me we, he delivered all the sand so i took his trucking out of the sand budget yep. because i knew that's what it was well that's that's what he that's what, what the quote right. was so i was he was buying the sand and trucking well, it, yeah. right? Yeah, and then we paid him, so we can. I can talk to Rod and see who should be yanked out of there and put into sand. It doesn't matter in the end, as long as we we know where it's coming and going. Yeah, more. Yeah, it's just that that you know we budgeted thirty and we spent seventy four thousand. I mean that's not even close. In the year before, I don't, I don't think we would have level funded if, if we knew we were coming in at 56. Right. Yeah. Although that doesn't include sand trucking. I, that I think is a lot of that had to do with the road. Uh, like mud season, oh, yep. contracting for mud season, yeah. and the, the fifty six thousand. Yeah, there there was some mud season contractors in there to help fix roads. Why are we up to well, seven, seventy four? I, well, I think that's that's sand hauling. I mean, I can look real quick. Well, there's something that shouldn't be in there, but it just seems like we need to define what falls under contracted services. Right, that's right. So usually it's like Matt Loftus. Yeah. Uh, anyone they contract that. Now the the green column is. 2021. Yeah, 21, 22. You must have what? Actual 22. Right. Oh, actual 22? Yep. So in the year ending, in the month ending June 30th, right, of this year. Yep. Okay. Because we've been level funding that for several years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, last year it jumped up. And this year it's really jumped up. And we're only halfway through. <laughs> That'd be 150,000. We'd be way off. Right. right. So I think we ought to check into that and make sure we know what's going into that. Yeah, yeah, it seems to make sense that it's... Because if, if it's something else that we've already budgeted and we're not taking it out of that. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Uh, I think that... I did not catch this. There's a hook construction that shouldn't be in here. Yeah. That's 42,000 of it. <laughs> oh. Um, and then KS construction, that's a grant. Right. 
Um, Which KS construction should know? Uh, George. Oh, Burbridge. oh, gotcha. Yeah. So that one is a grant fund. That will get repaid for. That will get reimbursed. But that's still that was twenty five thousand or twenty two thousand or something. That was twenty four thousand. But the forty two thousand, I want to make myself a note. Shouldn't be. Can, that well, should make, be that makes that look a lot better then. Well, it makes it look. Uh, yeah. Can you um, can you break that out somehow? Um, I mean, I understand why you got it in there. I guess now. Well, so the forty two thousand, I I put all of the bridge. That bridge into the bridge fund. Um, and some of that gets reimbursed too, right? I think almost all of it will get reimbursed. Yeah. So, um, unless you guys don't want it there, if you want it coming out of the highway. Well, I guess it's all right that it's there, but. Um, we some how somehow got to break it out. I mean, you can't budget. How do no, you know no. what to budget if you got yeah, a couple no. other things in there? Well, especially if there are anomalies like a, the bridge, the forty-two thousand is not going to be there every year, maybe. And then you think you'd be way ahead on the bridge fund too. Right. So without the hook in there, it's 32,116, uh, of which 24,000 uh, will be reimbursed, which now puts it at $8,116. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's why we level funded it. <laughs> yep. I guess so. That makes sense. That makes more sense. Um, and do you think there's something similar in the 56, or is that just because of the world tour spawn season? Yeah, there was a, I don't remember the number, but it was, it was a pretty good number for month season. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, because we put loads when he put 60 loads right in the Bicknell Hill there. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, but I mean, we had people all following all sorts of crazy stuff last year. <laughs> Magic. Uh, yeah, that one wouldn't surprise me. So I think 30,000 is probably fine. And I'll take, I will take um, hook out. Um, so in, like in the mud season, if we just need enormous amounts of say, you know, hard pack, that goes to a line item for, is there like a stone glass gravel? Well, it should come out of should come out of gravel. Yeah, right. there is gravel, but I mean, we'd already just in gravel alone, we overspent that by twenty thousand. Yeah, we overspent that by twenty three thousand. And that, I mean, and that was just gravel. That wasn't including the trucking, but they were trucking every single day just to try to keep up with mud season. So they had contracted out to a couple, a few different people. Yeah. So those those figures are pretty accurate. Yeah. So I guess we better leave contract services at thirty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think everything else, unless we want to up the gravel budget. Um, why is maintenance supplies? We better do something with that. Well, we just doubled that one. We made it 30. Because that was okay. that was tires, you said. Tires and... Oh, that's right. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
that's okay. Um, uh, gravel. Um, we ought to bump that up, did not we? I mean, I don't really know how much, but. <laughs> say. Although this year we're sort of doing okay. Yeah, we went forty thousand so far. Well, it's so it, far. It's, it's mud season. No, but, we, ain't, we ain't hit mud season yet. <laughs> but does this forty thousand include the big pile that's up there now? Have we paid for that? Probably. So this is everything so, that we've accumulated <laughs> now. Yeah. Um. I'm. I mean, Could I can we, tell you where we're at we, right now. If you want to know that number. Sure. Should we do? like 175 perhaps but becky's going to get us a number a solid number on what we have what we're at right now right so, now but we yeah. don't know how much is in the door yet well it's a pretty good pile i don't remember what rodney said it was but but it probably is no more than last year what are you thinking about diesel too mike well that you know i think I think realistically, we ought to go to 15,000 15, on that. Um, it's that I, mean, I, I mean, who knows? Right now, stuff is creeping down a little bit, but I don't know. So right now, as we stand today, the gravel, we're at 66,000. Yeah, so we got a third, but we should have, I don't know. I think we ought to go 175 on that. Okay. Okay. You know, I was looking at the diesel just two lines up from that, Mike, where we've leveled. Yeah. Um, we got I, killed. I think. I think we ought to bump that up to 60. Well, I was going to say 75, but. Because we spent 70 last year. Yeah. Um, and that happened in the last like two months. Right. It yeah, just right. went through the roof so quickly. Right. I think we ought to go up to 75 on that. Honestly, let's do, let's do it and hope we're surprised. Hopefully, over budget. Yeah, yeah. If we don't use it, well, then we can. Right. Oh, there'll be something else. Oh yeah, truck maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> um, gasoline. We ought to knock that up another five hundred, and we. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Two thousand. And, and sand, we probably yeah, that's, we can't level up on that. Do Do you have a actual on sand right now, um, Becky? Yeah. The road salt came in way under. Look at that. <clears throat> These numbers are kooky. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I think we could safely leave that alone. Yeah. Culvert. We better spend more on culverts. So <laughs> sand is still at 41,000. Huh. Okay. Because it's delivered. So, so yeah. Okay. Um, should we go like just to 90? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And hope that we don't have any more ice storms. <laughs> 2% more ice. Right. Uh, we're high on road salt, high on chloride, low on culverts. Let's um, leave road salt alone, but you want to drop, uh, Rodney's been really trying to save on chloride yeah um of course last summer helped him because 
it never rained, so you couldn't put any down. Well, um, I think he also thinks that it affects the. Yes, he does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Lime. Yep. So, do we want to? Let's let's knock let's knock it down to fifteen. Oh, just think. just in case. <laughs> I I go more than that. What time? Maybe ten. I'd go lower than that. You would. Yeah. Okay. Ten. Okay. Okay. We'll put in it. Put it in for ten. Culvert could go up though. Yeah. The so culverts here is the, the thing about culverts is it's also that's a lot of the grants cover a oh, lot of culverts. Uh huh. So, um, a but lot they, of them but the, they went way up though, didn't they last year? Or or That's we couldn't to find too. It's sort of like tired. Yeah, we couldn't get them. Yeah, I was there. We couldn't get them. I don't know. Rodney had he had had an order that it took him a year to get. Yeah. Them. Let's so, um. You think it? We ought to just bump it up to fifteen. Sure. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Nine. We're gonna have to triple signs because Rodney's gonna have to start buying them again pretty soon. <laughs> you think so? My foot's missing. Yeah, yeah. He, he's been using up his supply in the garage here from the ones we ripped down. He's what? got a three thousand maybe. Three. Yeah, three thousand. Right. Let's do two thousand. Well, we were. Look at there's a twenty eight hundred. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe two thousand. Uh, try two. All right. Most we can do is go over. I was gonna say, didn't Mariah just put in for a grant? About signs. signs. That happened. Is that a real thing? Guardrails. Whoa. A grant for signs. I had done a grant for signs a while ago for like caution men at work that type of signs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Different signs. Okay. So what did we decide on signs? Two thousand. Two thousand. Guardrails. Well, so guardrails. This was because they had to put the guardrails in on. Oh, Dickerman. Yeah. We don't have a lot of <laughs> this year. Zero. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I I think that was the first time I'd ever had guardrails. Um, we'll fund it. Yeah. Thousand. And then the rest, uh, the only other one is bridge repair. And so. Um, like this covered bridge. Uh, or is that bridge? Yeah, so the, the this 1500 is a covered bridge repair. So now that we have our bridge fund funded, I had taken all of the bridge, but I think this is one payment in there. From last year, it's hard when I don't always put all the 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 bills in myself. So Jola does it, and so sometimes she puts it where I would not want it. Right. Sometimes I catch it, and sometimes I don't. What was what was that proposed covered bridge repair? Forty five thousand or something. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was forty five thousand, and then I got one another bid, and that was fifty five to sixty five thousand. So yes, a lot. There are grants for that because they're historic. That's some a good Marianne question. I'm not sure. But what do you want to do about bridge repair? It's going to be a lot more than. <laughs> we have twenty thousand. It's going to be way more than that. What bridge was that on? Was that on Flint Bridge? Flint, yeah. Do what, Gary? I wonder what bridge that, that estimate was on. Under the Flint Bridge. I don't know. No, but it needs to be re sided. And we saw, didn't we? Some of our cowed lumber is potentially going to go there. Right. Well, yeah, I guess. What do you do? Do you make it 50 and hope to get reimbursed? Ooh. We're putting up a lot of things here. Our budget's going to be up. Okay. Double digits. 
It it's the year of the Democrats. High high taxes. <laughs> um, I mean, the other thought is to level fund the bridge repair and take. Uh, did we have surplus last year? A small amount of surplus. Move that to the bridge fund. Not a bad idea. Lay that on me again. So I, my thought process was kind of to level fund this twenty thousand in the regular budget, but now we have a bridge fund, and maybe moving the surplus that was nineteen thousand one hundred and thirty-two dollars and sixty-six cents, and move that to the bridge fund. Oh, okay. Pay for it there. Okay. Just the thought. The bridge, yeah, fund. Was, was. So the bridge fund is a separate fund. It's yeah. not on here. It's not on here. And so essentially when we get the money back from, from the grant that is paying for hooks, hooks mm -hmm. my plan was to put all of that into there. Um, but can we find 50, 60,000 to put in there to cover at least this covered bridge repair? Well, so I'm wondering, I think, I think there will be that when that one gets reimbursed. And I think when there's surplus, Marianne yeah. is on top of it. So we're going to get it back maybe even this year. Yeah, right. Because she's quick. And then we also have all that paving money. In right. this. So we'll have a surplus. Yeah. There's also just, just all of our funding surface uh, we also have money in like our emergency, um, like our disaster planning right. Right. Yeah. fund. So yeah. I think I don't have a problem with that. I mean, as long as we just know if we get a question at town meeting saying, can't you guys read numbers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I think I will. And it's just a hard one to budget for too, because we're not going to have potentially a Flint Bridge type repair every year, right? Every like, year, yeah. Yeah. When we do plan on bridges, we usually plan on them with a grant. Right. So yep. usually we're going to spend a lot of money, but we're going to get most of it back. Right. Yeah. So you want to just level fund that? I guess so. And, and try to work our way out of it. Yeah. Right. Oh, I think miscellaneous, even though it's a 12,000, I don't know why. Just in case. A lot of miscellany. Uh -oh. Tool maintenance. We're a little low on tool maintenance. And now there's nothing. I don't know. How have we done no tool maintenance this year? The tool, yeah, I think it, those are like you the put homes else. or something oh. sometimes. Anything that doesn't have its own maintenance fund goes into there. And then what? So we decide we'll just do 20% on all maintenance cross uh, On the trucks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just let's look at that. Um, have Becky. Um, oh, figure that up for us yeah for next time and if it looks too scary maybe we can cut it back but boy you, you know if you actually look at the 22 actuals except for number six they're all pretty pretty good right and then all of a sudden you have forty two thousand there so all right <laughs> When I cried about, I was like, "What are you guys doing?" The driver must be hired on that. Oh, like, maybe we we were like rebuilding an entire truck here. <clears throat> um. The only other one is: Do we want to go up on heating oil? Good. I oh. think we could. diesel by another another name. <laughs> 
pretty much. Go to 10. Okay. 10, Mike. What's that? 10 on heating oil. Yes. Yeah, my page flipper was flipping on me here. <laughs> I'm trying to find it for you. I'm I'm doing my best. Page. Now, the next question is, do we want to stop fund actually using tax money to fund the disaster relief now that that has some money in it? Because we've been using so much. much how much money is it? How much money is in it? He's looking. He's looking right now. Fifty fifty thousand or seventy five. It should be a fairly good number. Maya, stop diddling around and bring it up to disaster relief. It's not on here. Yes, it is. Very bottom. At the very bottom. Okay. My my bad. My bad. It's I know. I'm getting scolded from both ends here. 31. I don't think we need to fund it with tax money anymore. Right. Okay. So I would take that twenty five thousand out. So we okay, that would be nice. Yeah. Now, just out of curiosity, I don't remember what did Rodney want that to be in the beginning. Like, oh, it was over 100, I don't know. Wasn't it 150? Yeah. Or 120? I think so, but I um, I don't know what he wanted it to be. Well, it doesn't matter. Just a substantial uh, amount. sort of target. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember what he, what he had said he wanted it to be. I, I just kind of feel like. Over this year that we're <laughs> we're doing yeah. this, we might get back to it, but I think yeah, it might be a good year to do that. Well, if we can get put another twenty out of surplus into there, then we got our hundred and fifty. Yeah, we can ask them. Make a note of that. Um, but just I know that was one I was thinking. You know, we could save a little bit there if we yeah. don't. Yeah. For that one. Yeah. So that's yeah. Old, that's this place. Yeah. Yeah. Usually we use our money there. Just bank it essentially, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck because you guys got a lot of requests. Yeah, we did. Money. Mm -hmm. Even just with what we want to do with it. So I don't I don't know if there'll be a lot, but I just everything yeah. Else is up. Everything else is up, so I think we can save. And then the other one that I also thought in the general fund is is um we always send five thousand to um to the capital improvement. Yep. But that fund also is brother. I mean it's not huge, it's not a huge amount, but we're not planning any capital improvement. Right. I mean, do you know how much it has? Just rough figures, just <laughs> I don't know. No, we we'll use most of it up. Two years ago. Yeah. That's the sort of thing with that. If we did like a winterizing of, you know, storm windows, we'd right. exactly wind it out. Well, hopefully we can use some ARPA money on it too. Well, that's still okay. Get rid of it for just this year. Yeah. Just to save us the pennies here. Yeah. You good with that, Mike? Yeah. With everything else going up so much. And hopefully we're guessing wrong on stuff. And it won't be so much. Huh. Well, okay. And then the other thing you guys need to think about is there's 120 in surplus. In the uh, in the road. No general fund. Highway highway department. No, that's nineteen thousand, which we talked about putting into the bridge fund. 
the messages from the bunk beds upstairs. I think that they'll fit in the car. Um, <laughs> Mariah. No, it's uh, George and, and um, what's the name? Amy. Who's going upstairs? <laughs> messages. Um, so, yeah. Where's that for here? The 5,000. No, no, the 120 surplus. Oh, it's um, it's at the bottom of the bottom. Yeah, there's, there's 120 from the general fund. We can, and we don't have to. Well, I guess we still have to ask voters for that. Yeah, I would recommend, but if well, the highway it. stuff we can we can do what we want with, right? But it's only 19. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I don't know. We're changing how we're doing this. Well, it sounds like the state is. Well, the state has now said that we can change how we're doing it. So you may. But I think it makes sense to just put that in the bridge fund, knowing that. Know that but it'd be interesting to move money from the general fund over to we're going to need it in highway. We may have to, yeah. Well, especially if we end up having to build a new town garage, it'd be nice to like take that 120 and put it there and then do that two, two or three years in a row and get us a long way toward building a new garage. We need to create a new fund then. Um, town garage something fund. Yeah. Uh, and that has to happen at town meeting, and we have to discuss yeah. if we want to fund it. But I, we have money that we voted last year that I haven't moved anywhere because I'm like, I don't know where to put it. Um, yeah, because we don't have a home. So Mariah, for, on your little town meeting memo, yes, <laughs> that you're keeping, we're gonna, we definitely need a an article for creating a town garage fund. Okay. Start plugging money into. And, and maybe even more broadly than just town garage. Uh, I don't know what, how to say it, but. Town garage campus. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think. Because right, we might build uh, not yeah. the garage specifically, yeah. right. So <laughs> it could be like the garage traffic. capital improvement fund only because the current capital improvement fund excludes the garage. Um, yep. So it, it might be helpful to have just one. Yeah, I think so. Right. I just I didn't want somebody to get picky someday and say, well, you're, you're building a, a, a shed or something and not a town garage, so you can't spend the money on that. So. But it could be like a highway capital. Yes, yep. Than any capital improvement. Highway, oh, highway capital improvement fund. Or highway buildings capital improvement yeah, fund. Or something. Should, if it's set aside, right, it shouldn't go to paving the Stratford Road. Right. right. Well, so capital improvement, I think, strictly yeah. like implies that it is building funds, not right. road funds. But maybe having buildings in the title wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, I wouldn't call it a building fund. Because then that covers everything. Yeah. Well, then also, I mean, we got a salt shed, but if we needed some some other smaller building like that, we could, if we had the money, we could do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got to have the Monarch Hill Road Improvement Fund. <laughs> Capital improvement. We'd be funding it. All right, good. Got a handle on it. All right, I will put all of these numbers in. Um, oh, you do have your hand up. Yeah, I, uh, for what it's worth, um, I, the year end numbers are starting to get closed at the state level. So we got our CLA. Um, which, which has dropped to 91.83%. Really? 
and the rough estimate of the statewide education taxes um, are going to be are going to drop like seven cents for homesteads and eight cent cents for non-resident. So it's going to shake out that our homesteads will probably go up a nickel and our non-residents will probably go up six cents because the, the drop in the statewide education rate will be offset by our CLA dropping that much. But we're still within the parameters, the parameters of what's okay. Yeah, we yes. yeah no, we don't, we're not mandated to do a reappraisal, but that, that'll give a rough idea what's going to happen to the education taxes. It's technically not your job, and I hugely appreciate all that you guys are doing <laughs> on your piece of it, but I just wanted to give you that background just because it those numbers started coming. Yeah. Rudy, what are the, is it like 85 and 115? What are the the bookends on where you're sort of get in trouble. Yeah, the CLA is 85 and, and 115. Okay. And the, and the COD is 20%. And we're at 91.83 for the CLA and 16.8 something for the, our COD barely went up. 65% of the towns in the state are going to be mandated to do a reappraisal. Whoa. Wow. No, well, because of all of the people buying houses. Yeah, that's that's true. Right. Right. Oh, how did we get so lucky? Our C I, I'm guessing, but Rudy can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing because our CLA was like much higher. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, we kind of, the last time we did a town reappraisal was at the tail end of the run up in 2010 so right. we we were kind of high for a while hmm. yeah. and now we're not excessively low because <laughs> we were kind of high it <laughs> <laughs> was interesting what was our cla last year it was like one uh 98 wow. yeah. is it at 98 but then the year before that, I feel like we were like at almost at like 116 at one point. That was the peak of it, kind of. It it did a bell curve. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that 116 was the peak. And then now we're. So we're going the other way. Yeah. Uh, that's the way it goes. <clears throat> yes. All right. All right, I got to go, but just wanted to toss that out there for Thank you. Thank, oh, you. Thank you all for your service. Hugely appreciated. Yep. You too. You too. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Well, that, that must be the end of our budgeting then. Yeah, I think yeah. that's for now, and I'll I'll put all the numbers in, and yeah, yeah. you should be able to. Yep. Uh, I will also look at what it does to the tax rate. Yeah. Right, because we uh, still may want to readjust. Right. Yeah. If, if it's too scary. Yep. Um, Is it your turn to run again this year, John? No. Who's up? Mike, I think. Mike oh, oh, know. yeah, because so, I did last year. Ooh. Right. Ooh, these high taxes, nobody will vote me back in. <laughs> I just wondered if you were going to even run. He's running as a Democrat. Yeah. Yeah. You better. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. I guess if there's nothing, no other business, John and I can sign the orders. And you All guys. Right. All right. <laughs> Go watch some uh, some uh, treasure hunters. Oh, Oak, 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 Oak Island. Curse yeah. of Oak Island. It's on at nine. I have time nine. to make my popcorn and Ooh. get ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> good timing. <laughs> Are you going to print out 
a big stack of minutes for me to go over at some point? Yeah, I have one printed out. I just, I was needing to get two more uh, minutes done. So I'll give them to you next week or next meeting, not next week. Uh, yeah, yeah. And what, uh, I've got presents for you guys, I think. Uh -huh. But you're not here, so I guess that's... <laughs> <laughs> All the presents for me. Yay, Becky. <laughs> That's what you get when you come to a live meeting. Next meeting, I guess. That's right. All I'll say is, hey, Mike. Ooh. Something for you, I think. I like that. <laughs> anyway, teaser. We'll get them. That's yep. right. We'll get them for you. I could always stop at, at the household with Oak Island on and drop this. <laughs> I'll be here. Alrighty. That's the chair. Oh, thank you. I'm waiting for you. I thought it was really? Yeah, really? It's pretty funny. It's not even that old. Man. It Amazing. looks ancient, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that's right. So. Look at the old. Yeah. Town report from 1983. Oh. <laughs> oh, and just so you know, um, I was talking to Ann Mallory about just budgeting, and and I said that I I said that we shouldn't up the select boards pay, and I I think legally we can't anyway. <laughs> but she chastised me because she thinks we ought to get paid more because then we can attract <laughs> better quality. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, go up to 15,000 a piece. Uh. Yeah, right. So anyway, <laughs> yes, and I want my pay increase. But... <laughs> oh, God. Our treasurer and our town clerk will rethink their <laughs> town positions. <laughs> <laughs> This or did Emily? Oh, I mean, the, the bags, yeah. Steve. Very nice. All right, unless you guys want to hang around, we can. I do not. I do not. <laughs> I make a motion we adjourn. I'm talking that. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 That's the stuff on the table here. Uh, Master's popcorn balls. Oh, oh, nice. Wow. Everyone enjoy. This is Bonnie. Yeah. For Bonnie or from Bonnie? From, from, Bonnie. from Bonnie. From Bonnie. I'll take them. Very good. So my mom always gives me some. Now the mom's not here. I don't do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We're gonna sign okay. off. Okay. Have a have a great rest of your evening. You, you too. too. You too. Don't get too informed by Oak Island. I'll, yeah, I will. I'll be right into it. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Yep.